Great. So, hi everybody, and this is the monthly meeting for Chaos on July 2nd. We do have an agenda today, um, so there's a few things that I just kind of want to get to, and if anybody wants to add anything, absolutely no problem. Um, you should all know that this is, we're in the comment period for the uh, metrics version one release. Uh, and we have posted, for those of you that haven't seen it yet, put it in the chat here, the release candidate metrics are live on the website with issues associated with them. Now these just went live last week and we have, you know, four weeks to make comments. So I would, I'll send out a request later today, but it would really be great if folks on this call and folks in the community could even just pick one or two metrics to take a look at. It doesn't have to be an extensive review of, of it, every metric and preferably not a metric that's in the working group that you're part of, which would be great. Hi, Gaylord. Goodbye, oh, I hear you there. So it'd be great if people could at least take a look at a few of the metrics that are candidates to provide some feedback on. All right, any comments on that? I think, I think it looks really good. Good. Hey, Kevin. Uh, will you provide the link, uh, the GitHub link? Yep. So for every, if you take a look at in the metrics, if say, for example, you click on common metrics, organizational affiliation, there's a link, see comment in the third column. So you can click on the metric like organizational diversity. You see what I'm talking about? I'm going to share my screen really quickly. Yeah, it's there. I see it. Um, I have a question about these. Do you want some social media um, uh, marketing of this a little bit, like for the general public in the community? Yes, that would be great. The, the broader the number of people that can take a look at these, the better. Gotcha, Chief. Thank you. So Armstrong, did that make sense to you too? Do you see the link there? Yes, I've seen the link. Okay, great. So again, if people could just pick a few and just give them a read and if something makes sense, great. And if it doesn't make sense, great, <laughs> post a comment. Uh, um, this is a, a great way to do it. I'm also trying to spend time in the working groups, um, specifically over the next, couple weeks to really kind of walk through each of the metrics. So for example, we did this in value on Friday to try to find ways to improve the metrics. And I think it was super valuable, at least from my, from my point of view. Yeah. So um, anyway, that's kind of the process right now. Um, any other comments on this? I think things are going well. And again, I want to say thanks to Kevin for, building out this website. Um, okay, cool. Um, oh, thanks for taking notes. Um, Google Summer of Code, mostly just an update on this. From my perspective, things are going extremely well with Google Summer of Code. The four students that we have, there's two students that are kind of participating on the Augur side of the world, and there's two students that are kind of participating in the Grimoire Lab side of the world. Uh, as far as I can tell, have both been very, all of them have been very actively engaged, providing the weekly blog posts, which are really short reads. Um, I do, again, encourage people to take a look at these um, and comment if you see anything. The, um, we just cleared the first hurdle for Google Summer of Code, which is a, it's an evaluation period. So uh, all the students and all the mentors had to, there had to be evaluations done kind of both directions there. Um, and I think that's all, that's all completed. I know it's all completed. Um, the one issue that I'm dealing with right now on Google Summer of Code is that 
the way that Google pays out the projects is they pay directly into the Linux Foundation, at least for our project. So the Linux Foundation handles the Payoneer account. And I'd really like, so those funds are gonna go into the Linux Foundation Payoneer account. I really wanna get those funds out of the Linux Foundation and into Community Bridge because we still actually have some old funds sitting at the LF that aren't in Community Bridge. And this is, it's gonna happen again this summer because that's where the dollars are gonna go. So it's really just a logistical update. <laughs> I think we have like uh, $1,500 in there right now and we're gonna end up with another couple thousand dollars in there that I would like to hoist over to the Community Bridge site. Okay, does anybody have? Yeah, how do we want to add comments on those? Um, so John on the, if you take a look, so John had posted a question on the metrics release pages. See where it says issue or comment in that third column? I you think see that? Uh, he already went down into the metric. Oh, you went into the metric. To the issue is only on the summary page. So John, go back to that. Go back to this page. So maybe process improvement would be to include the link also on all the detailed pages. Diversity access. So what would that look like? Like maybe just at the oh, top. Oh, like okay, that. okay. The the link where the comment says link that takes. You yes, to as Georg said, it's not on that detailed uh, page. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you but maybe that's worth doing. Kevin, would that be a pain? So the, the adding that link, you if we're adding them to each of the detail pages, it would be a pull request to uh, for every detail page. So that you can uh, pull it forward. So I, I think the work groups could probably handle that pretty easily, or, or I could do it. Okay. Um, okay. Good. If it's not too much work, Kevin, I think it's easier for the project as a whole if we just take it on. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Okay. And you can just add, I'll accept all the pull requests. At the top of each detail page? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, well, okay, so on anything else on Google Summer of Code, that was really just an update and kind of where we're at in that project right now. Um, Gary, did you have any comments on Google Summer of Code? Like I said, from my perspective, it seems like it's going well. I have nothing to add. I'm very pleased with how the students are working through the issues and making progress. It's looking really good. So. I agree. Okay, cool. All right, um, ChaosCon North America. So this will be a little bit of time. Um, so I think I, we, we have our two, our two keynotes set. So we have Yana Gallus, who's an academic from UCLA. Right who's going to be talking about uh, rewards and the impact of rewards in community engagement. And we also have um, Zahida, and I don't know her last name, who's a manager of open source at AWS. So to give us, and I wish, um, I wish Don was here because this was Don's invite. Do you remember Zahida's last name, Georg? No, I don't. Okay. Um, booster. Try right, to see if I can find it. When is the schedule going live? Because well, yeah, so the schedule, I think at this point, so I think it's Sahita Borat, head of open source strategy at AWS. 
which is great. So we have basically the two keynotes that we have are one from industry talking about open source and open source related issues, particularly around health, and one is an academic. So I think that'll be great. Um, the schedule, I think, can go live at this point. So, Georg, we got, I guess everybody, we got confirmation from Allison at Indeed that she can do the other 20-minute talk. So this was for Danny. Remember that request that I sent out to events? Basically, we had an individual that we were asking to extend a lightning talk, and it turned out that the best option was to have somebody else give the talk. Nonetheless, the schedule is set. Um, I can actually share it here at that point. Uh, maybe I'm not quite the yet. The schedule website. What's that? Who is going to create the website? The schedule? I'm looking at Kevin, even though it's just a picture. I'm not going to share the link here because there's some other information in here. But. No, no. It's just a matter of uh, updating the markdown file. So it's not. I'll do it then if no one else wants to. If you take a look, Georg, at that, again, I can't share it here. But the Chaos Constructor tab. You know what I'm talking about? In Chaos Count Events, we had used last time we met. Should I have, don't have the document. I'll send it to you on a band. Yeah. Um, but it looks like we're all good. Um, and then we have, again, <laughs> just really logistical things. Uh, we're good to go on coffee and snacks in the morning and coffee and snacks in the afternoon. All right. So, and we're having banners or like uh, tents made to thank Baturgia and Red Hat for their sponsorship. So those will be kind of displayed as well. Um, and that'll be great. So I guess because we have Liturgy and Red Hat folks here, you know, thanks for that uh, as well. And um, Brian, because of the, <laughs> you know, you, you get a little bit of time at the beginning, right? To say a few words. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably a big mistake. You, you get it like a minute or two. So you might want to just keep that in the back of your mind. I'm going to make Veronica do it since you had her name on the website for so long. Uh, has that been fixed, by the way? I don't know. I if don't know. I haven't looked. I'll, I'll take a look. Um, so anyway. You can also donate another $1,000 and then you don't have to speak. No, <laughs> you can't take it away. <laughs> it's been spent on coffee. <laughs> no, I'm not saying to... Give it no, he's saying, no, he's saying donate another thousand so I can, yeah. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> Clearly he wants donuts now. <laughs> so honestly, everything seems to be going pretty well in that regard. Um, I've ordered stickers and poker chips to hand out as kind of some uh, things to give away to people. I still need to get the name badges made. For some reason, I keep forgetting to, to send that request in. Uh, I remember now, but then this meeting will end and I will forget. Um, I'm gonna be there. Is anybody gonna be there the day before it all? No, I am. Who's all going here? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna come in Monday evening. Okay. Um, so I'll be there Monday evening, Tuesday for, the, for just chaos and then maybe Wednesday morning. Okay. Um, I know a few people will be around the day before. I, I might ping you just if we need anything for helping set up or whatever it might be. Um, so the way the chaos constructor is going to work this year is we have two rooms. Um, we have one room that's going to be dedicated to presentations. So it's going to be all of the 20 minute presentations and all of the lightning talks. You know, so like 20 minute blocks, take a break. You're, three 20 minute blocks, take a break. Three 20 minute blocks, take a break lunch, you kind of get the idea. And then the other room is going to be for the workshops. And so there's going to be a Grimoire Lab workshop, there's going to be an Augur workshop, and there's going to be a diversity and inclusion workshop. So you can't obviously attend both. Smaller room is for more hands-on work. People want to take a look at the technologies. 
or participate in the DNI workshop. And then the other is for just listening to the presentations and engaging that way. So that's the structure we have. Okay. All right, cool. I'm following the broken car conversation as well. Okay. <laughs> Any? Yeah, I look forward to ChaosCon. I'll be there the day before. I don't know my time right now, but I'll be there. Okay. Uh, great. Hey, Don, can you tell us about Zahida? Now that you're back, I was dragging my feet. <laughs> yeah. So, so I talked to her, and she's. I. I. Sorry. I need to follow up with her and get um get an abstract. But kind of what okay. we we talked sort of at a at a high level for for what we want. And so Zahida has been involved in the open source community for a really long time. And so I think that part of what she's going to talk about is kind of ways that they the ways that they they used to measure. Um, success in open source projects back in her open office days and kind of contrast it with with how things tend to work today but with a focus not on the measurement piece because that's not not really her expertise she has a lot of expertise in kind of open source programs so i think she's going to talk about it more from the standpoint of how it impacts decision making and would, kind of and kind of ways that she's done that over over the years so um yeah i'll put that on my to-do list to follow up with her and what's her last name uh, Borat. Okay, that's what I thought. B H O R A T. Yes. Okay. okay. Got it. Well, thank you for doing that. That's great. I was yeah. kind of yeah. She's on the stuff. she's on the open source team at Amazon AWS. Cool. Um, and then just we're gonna get the schedule published. I'm guessing this week. I think we're set in every other regard. Um, cool. And Allison from uh, Indeed, she's gonna do the 20 minute talk. So we're all good there. Cool. Okay. All right. Great. Um, any other comments on ChaosCon? All right. Looks like we're just rolling into that one right now. Okay. So here's one that I, okay. So chaos on social media. All right. So I, I might have a, a very nice Twitter handle, a very Twitter handle, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, so is there, Anything that we should be doing a bit more intelligently, a bit more strategic with social media, a bit more in line with connected with the Linux Foundation. Help me out here. Anybody who 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 does anything more than me, which is all of you. <laughs> well, well. I First off, you need to define the goals. What are you trying to okay. get out of this? Are you trying to get traffic coming into the site? Are you trying to get people to go to the events or both? Or I think it's probably the, in my, my mind, it's a bit the former to get kind of the word out on the work that we're doing mm -hmm. and to attract people to the project. We don't seem to have trouble getting people to come to the events. That doesn't seem to be a hurdle for us. I mean, generally the approach that we take at Red Hat is that we try to establish ourselves and the people in our communities as thought leaders in the process. So there's a lot of, there's going to be the occasional, hey, we've got a new blog or new content here. Or we're talking about the metrics releases or things like that. But then there's also, we intersperse content around anything to do with metrics. So, you know, if the Harbor Project um, were to post something online, we would say, hey, this is interesting. Or, or look at what these guys are doing with metrics, even if it's not necessarily related to us. You know, but by establishing ourselves as thought leaders around the idea of community metrics, that usually gets a little bit more engagement going um, on social media platforms. Okay. One, one of the things I do think that we need to do a better job of is getting announcements and things like that out through the Linux Foundation channels, like the fact that we have this release coming up. Mm -hmm. I think we really should work with, um, with people like Sarah and others at the Linux Foundation to make sure that we're, we're getting, you know, maybe mentions in their press releases around, around the conferences and, and things like that to better promote the overall work of the project. Sarah, Sarah Novotny? No, sorry, Sarah oh. Conway okay. um, at the Linux Foundation. She heads up their marketing department. She's gone, isn't she? Didn't she? Isn't she no longer at the LF? 
Sarah? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, but. No, that's what I heard as well. Yeah, she's moved, but I don't know where yet. Okay, so we need a new contact within the marketing department at. So does this, Linux okay, Foundation. so let me, I'm sorry, I'm gonna ask some really simple questions here. So it, is this about the chaos project handling our social media better? Or is it about us, like me as a person, contacting somebody at the LF and pointing them to say like the chaos weekly thing. You know what I mean? Like that seems, how do we, how do we start bridging this to get a wider audience? I think it's, I think it's probably both. Okay. But I do think we need to proactively reach out to the Linux foundation in advance of, you know, any announcements that we wanted to make, whether it's around chaos con or around the metrics release, because I do think we should work to get some promotion around the metrics re release in particular. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I can do that. I can figure out who that person is at the LF um, and f feed them that type of information. Um, but what about, what about our own social media channels? We have the, the Twitter handle. Yeah, I, I think one of the things I was just throwing in the document there is I think just having a written strategy about what we want to achieve and how and why, uh, then we can kind of use that as a roadmap for people who cycle in and out of uh, having the permissions to post things. Um, I, can, I can write that up. It's not hard. I can do that in the next couple of days. That would be, that would be great. I mean, thank you. Any bearings on this would be fantastic. Yeah. Sure. Um, Thank you, John. The Twitter account was created originally by Asus, I believe. Uh, Say that again, Gary. Sorry, if my microphone seems to not be working properly. Yes, you're a little fuzzy to me anyway. So um, I, I have an opinion on this. Uh, my opinion is the best way to raise visibility is to try and communicate less instead of more. Uh, the whole vision of chaos is quite large, and I think it's it's hard to communicate that to a broad audience. Uh, so rather than try to do that, what I would do is um, I would have a, a reference implementation, like just pick one metric and just promote that one metric. You know, you could you could say, oh, you know, we're gonna pr we're gonna have the leaderboard for open source projects for project velocity and. and and um, put that up, you know, have that be, you know, an auger implementation and let that be the front door for people to learn about, for people to learn about uh, chaos and sort of get into the wider world. Okay. So I've been, I've been working with Twitter for chaos for the last year or something. I would say that most of the communication has been around chaos. Camp. And uh, some of the specific events, like uh, some releases or stuff like that. And trying to answer people mentioning the handle in Twitter. So just engaging with them and stuff like that. And fortunately, during the last months, I didn't have a lot of time. So any help in this is uh, welcome. In any case, I would say that this is like the minimum maintenance. So I completely agree with you that we need a strategy to go beyond that. Because up to now, it has been trying to engage people in coming to uh, Chaoscom, trying to answer questions, and not much more than that. So, so I completely agree that we need a, a strategy and, and somebody with, with, with time for implementing it. Okay. Um, so is that, John, is that, was that what you were gonna work on, the strategy? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, maybe if, maybe the step would be to have John kind of bring something forward and it's at least serve as a platform for talking, I think is the, the goal. So we are all right with that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I get Andy's comment about less is more as well. Metrics are really easy to overwhelm. Like, I, yeah, I have tons of business stakeholders who will not pay attention to metrics okay. until I tie them to an actionable story. Okay, fair enough. I'll write that up. Okay, thank you. Um, who who currently controls the Twitter account? I just posted that in oh. the document. That well, you sound better, by the way. And he and I have um, access. Okay. 
I have access to that as well. However, I have never uh, posted anything. Okay. Is it common practice for like a community to have several people who have access to the same account, Twitter account? Is that normal? It's, it's not super unusual. Okay. So for me, it's usual, you know, the communities I participate on. Okay. I think it's even a good practice because if only one person is having it and let's say the person falls sick when great events are coming up or things like that, okay. the whole community is handicapped. Okay, fair enough. Uh, all right, cool. This is very helpful. Does anybody think this is not worth our effort? You, <laughs> I just put it in front of you under the assumption that it was a good thing. Um, so I would say that having a kind of minimum uh, per presence in Twitter is needed. I'm not sure about the real impact of trying to have a lot of effort put into that as compared to, I don't know, improving the metrics, for instance. So my, my impression is that, you know, you need to be there. People are going to mention you, you need to answer. You need, they, they are expecting announcements like the next chaos code or the of the metrics. Beyond that, honestly, I don't know. Maybe somebody with more, more expertise in social media can say. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there is a limited amount of bandwidth, right? I think that was your point. <laughs> and where that bandwidth is spent. Um, all right. Hey, John, too, in that, in the strategy thing, you can kind of just make note that I'm happy to kind of be the point contact to try to feed any of this information to the LF, is it the Linux Foundation as well? Yeah, understood. Okay, cool. Yeah. Perhaps, well, perhaps I'll, each I'll, working. Sorry, oh, go ahead, I was going to say, perhaps each working group could uh, assign a, a moderator or someone to handle the, the social media for that group. That way it kind of, all the working groups still have a focus and the uh, acts are kind of separate. Yeah. I mean, those would be the folks that would be best positioned to talk about the work that's occurring <laughs> within those working groups. That's certainly true. And the same would hold true for the work that's occurring in Augur uh, and Grimoire Lab. I mean, those yeah, are the for, for Grimoire Lab, we have a separate handle in Twitter. And okay. the relationship with Chaos has been basically trying to work with both. So from, from Grimoire Lab, because I'm also managing the, the one for Grimoire Lab. And okay. basically what I try to do is to retweet anything which could be relevant from Chaos and do the way around. Okay. And uh, maybe we could do the same with Augur and at least some of the working groups. Because, um, for instance, for diversity and inclusion, my impression is that they have a very specific um, target people interested in that, that could be interested in the rest of chaos or not. But if they uh, receive targeted information and from time to time some general information from chaos, maybe it's easier to engage them. I'm, I'm not sure, but that's okay. Do, do, do each of the working groups have their own handles at this point? Or are no, they... No. Okay, okay, so maybe we okay. just use hashtags for each one of the working groups. That's no, I, 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 as far as I know, we have not used the specific hashtags even for that, so uh, everything is only under the chaos uh, yeah, handle. We don't have it at the moment. And, uh, okay. and the Gilmore Lab, which is one of the software projects, also has an, an, a specific handle, but as far as I know, that's the only case. Okay, cool. I'll make some suggestions about how we do that just as an ongoing, like how, how we can do that. Can I, this kind of, I had one question. I'm kind of looking at the folks that deal with a lot of other open source projects or have dealt with other open source projects a lot in the past. Um, do you feel that we need to recruit more people into the working groups and these, these meetings here is, this is kind of like your, your rule, like a know, personal judgment metric that I'm asking for here. You know, is that, do we need more people? So I'll weigh in. Okay. Uh, from my perspective, uh, no, we don't need more people. Um, and I, I even think that more people would be counterproductive uh, uh, at this point in time, because we're still working through a lot of foundational things. Uh, I think it would be useful to have more people once we're more streamlined in terms of having working metrics and having working software. But until then, um, 
Okay. I, I don't think it would be super useful. That's my opinion. Yeah. Uh, others, may, others may disagree. Totally just asking for opinions here. <laughs> and all opinions are valuable. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to disagree. I disagree. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Don. Oh, I was just going to say, I think it depends on the working group. So um, we've lost some of our key participants in the diversity and inclusion working group. So Sarah, for example, no longer attends and she was a pretty key participant. So we just really don't have enough people to define the, the metrics that we need to define. So I would say in that working group, we probably, we probably need a bit, a bit more, um, especially because these metrics are less about defining the software and more about figuring out what it is that we need to measure. And I would say it's something similar for common that okay. we probably probably could use a few more people to help us with the definition of the metrics. Okay. Jesus. From the point of view of the evolution working group, I think that we need more people providing use cases. So how they are interested in using either the current metrics or which kind of metrics they are missing. From that specific point of view. Uh, okay. Because, uh, right now, what we try to do is uh, base it on the experience of the few people collaborating, trying to define the metrics. But obviously, that's that's not good enough because we are not capturing many other cases of people not that much involved in the in the working group. Okay. But, but 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 I also want to say that that doesn't mean that people came to the meetings. And I think that one of the blockers is that right now many people think that for contributing they need to come to the meetings. And uh, for us, it could be good enough if, if they just write a couple of, of paragraphs on how they use metrics or how they could use metrics. And it, it, because coming every week or every two weeks to the meetings is a lot of time on court in a specific points in time, which is not easy. Okay. Did somebody jot that down? Oh, no. Okay. We have not jotted it down, but the, the, we have been struggling with being able to support more contributors who work asynchronously from the beginning. Okay. And I think especially now with the release coming up where we may get more people, it's just something worth readdressing to figure out how we can scale. And the meetings will become a bottleneck if we want to scale larger. Okay. 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 Cool. So, the other thing I'll say is, um, I think Chaos does a really nice job of organizing in, in terms of um, having protocols and procedures for meetings, things of that nature. Uh, and you know, hats off to you, Georg. I think you've done a great job in that respect. I think the best thing we can do is just keep investing in sort of you know that that infrastructure to be able to hand productively handle more and more people it's not easy all right okay um, okay thanks uh, all right thank you everybody that was very productive um was there anything else on this? Maybe we could move to working group updates. I mean, maybe maybe all of you are just going to say we're working on the candidate metrics at this point. So <laughs> we can just put all colon working on candidate metric things. <laughs> are there any uh, particular things that the work, any working group would like to bring forward about successes or things you're doing in the future or whatever that might be? I, I just want to say that we are progressing with implementation of the basic uh, metrics based on Percival uh, with this point with the Google Summer of Code student. And uh, we have right now the first um, complete structure for implementing the, uh, I mean, for, for, for having the, the complete implementation for one metric. And I have a, a one question, which is, we are going to release the metrics. What do you want to do with the reference implementation? Do you want to have them frozen at the same time, which means they are not ready yet? Or we can wait for a couple of weeks when I expect to have at least some of them fully implemented? That's a good question. So the, the question is is with respect to say Augur or and or Grimoire Lab. In my case is with respect to Percival and Grimoire Lab, but I think that for Augur is very yeah. likely it's in. So okay. I, are basically, we're freezing at the same time that is now, 
or are we waiting for a couple of weeks so that we can have more reference implementations in this time? So is the question about when to announce that, say, Percival Grimoire Lab has? I mean, if, if they are a part of the release of the metrics or not? Oh, I see. that's the broader question. Yeah, basically, uh, we are, in the case of uh, evolution at least, we are doing fresh implementation, which are I the see. reference implementations, which is I not see. the same thing that we already have the metrics, because we already have how this metric is implemented in Grimoire Lab or in Ogle. We have that for many metrics. But if you remember, we were thinking about doing simple Python implementations of the metrics so that people can read the code and, and they can implement base it on there so that we have the same way of computing the metric in different implementations if, if other people want. And I'm, I'm asking specifically for the, second, for the second case, because the first one is already in the description as far as I know. Okay. Um, people have thoughts on this? I have some thoughts, but... I, it's interesting. I don't think we've ever really talked about um, software as being a component of the metrics release. Does anybody remember a conversation about that at all? I, I remember it. I remember at some point we were we were having this difference between what Augur or Gimar Lab implements. Yep. When they implement a metric or something similar to a metric, and then yep. having a different thing, which would be the reference implementation, which would be a simple code only targeted at showing how the metric is implemented and nothing else. And uh, up to now we have been dealing with that in the same repository, but I think the only case is the evolution working group. So I don't think this is general. So that's why I'm asking. Anything fits for me anyway. So I don't have a clear idea of whether this should be a part of the metrics or, or, or of the release or not, so. Um, I think value and risk are doing this as well. So I guess I have a couple comments here. Um, the first is, is that for all of the metrics that are part of the release candidates, they all have some indicator of a reference implementation, notwithstanding DNI. And it's not always the case that both Grimoire Lab and Augur are, are serving as reference implementations for that particular metric. There are cases where both Grimoire Lab and Augur have deployed the metric. And I think there are cases in the metrics where sometimes it's only Grimoire Lab. But I'm, 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 I'm talking here uh, as a reference implementation in, with a very specific meaning, which is not this is implemented in Augur or Grimoire Lab. Yes, this implementation would be, was built specifically according to the definition to um, inform the definition so that people, to complement the definition so that people can read the code and can look at the details. This is usually different of how Augur or Grimoire Lab are implementing metrics because they are implementing it as a part of a much wider report and it's not easy to know exactly how the metric is computed in, in, in both cases. You know, because there are several steps and several, let's say, code around, which makes it difficult to see how exactly the metric is computed. So that's why I think this is specific to the evolution working group up to now. But I understand what you mean. And uh, what you mean, I think, is right now, is it part of the description of the metrics? So that's going to be a part of the release because we already have that into the description of the metrics. Yeah, and we, and we point to those particular reference implementations yeah. in the metric. So, uh, I'm in favor of uh, forgetting about this for now until we have the complete thing for evolution so that we can also think a bit more about that in this period. I see. Yeah, I'm looking at, I'm taking a look at some of the release candidates under evolution. And I think I see, in, it, to your point, is there's considerable more detail, considerably more detail. Yeah, and, and, and it's basically the, the, the idea that the, the, the code is not for having some product or having something, let's say, useful but something for detailing how the metric is computed and that's Yeah, all. just to give people a bearing on, on kind of yeah. how this is done. If you're familiar with the IETF uh, of reference implementations for internet protocols, it's exactly the same idea. So it's okay. not having something, maybe that's something useful because somebody is doing a, 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 an application with it. But the main purpose is to show how the protocol is implemented. And, and this way it's the same. So it's like, if you get this metric, this is the way it is computed. So if you apply it, it, it to this repository, you should get 52, 52, for instance. 
So is your, ultimate, is your ultimate question whether or not the other release candidate metrics should have this level of reference implementation detail? So, I mean, at some point, maybe we decide so, but it's a, it's a, a significant amount of effort. Okay. So, uh, th that's why what, what I was trying to do is to have an example of how to do it. And I then see. later on, we can discuss whether other working groups find it useful or not. But if you remember, what we are trying to, to do with this is answering this problem that we also have, which is you are computing the metric in some way, I'm computing the metric in some other way, the results are different. And it's very difficult to, to say this is right, this is wrong, or even when you're comparing two products, uh, this is doing the right way according to chaos metrics. Okay. Um, uh, going back to the original question, whether to include that as the official part of the metric release or not, um, it sounds like the reference implementations will not all be ready for the release, and we only have one working group that is very advanced on it, whereas other working groups don't have that much. So from a chaos overall perspective, I don't think we can make it a requirement at this point and should leave it optional. So I would vote for not part of release, but linked from the metric. No, I, uh, first of all, I assume that's not going to be a requirement because we already decided that. My question is, even if we are going to consider that as optional, in the sense that, are we going to mention this as a part of the release at all? Because my, my, my main problem is having only a couple of metrics maybe implemented in a simple working group. Maybe it could be distracting for the, for the release, I would say. And uh, because it would focus on what is missing or something like that. If we don't include this reference. Yeah, I get your point that I get your point that we seem inconsistent if we include it or mention it. My view is that if we include it in some and not others, then we show what is possible and we will make clear this is the very first release of metrics. And if someone wants to have it more on reference implementations on other metrics, then we invite them to create it. Uh, this is open source, it will always be incomplete, and we yeah. all have something to work towards, but we at least show what is possible, what we are working on. So I would include it. Mm -hmm. okay. so any other opinions? Or? Well, I think my, my opinion is broader, just in the sense of thinking about how a release is related to software. And, and what that looks like, because I don't think we've had that conversation too yeah. deeply at, at, a, at a broad level um, yet. And it's obviously, it's not something we're going to solve between now and <laughs> the end of the release candidate. Yeah. So I, I think that we need a kind of a temporary solution for this release. Yeah. And probably, probably this should be something to discuss in more detail for the next release. It's a very, it's, I mean, I think of release implementations. I know that you're thinking about it. I'm thinking about it with particular respect to the pieces of software, Grimoire Lab and Augur, like as, as things that I kind of hold, right? Yeah. Um, and being able to tie those together with say a release version 1.5 or 2.0 by saying not only do we have these metrics, but we have tooling that is very effectively displaying these metrics, it's very, I just don't think we've ever done that and trying to, to get those two things in sync is appealing to me. At least it's appealing at the moment. Okay. So we go with the idea on, on by Georg that we mention this as one try that we are having of having this kind of reference implementation and that's something that maybe in the future we're going to implement in other working groups. But at the same time, we mentioned that the metrics have uh, a reference in other implementations, say during in Grimoire Lab or Augur, where people can mm -hmm. get a real idea of how that's also implemented. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and I, like I said, I do think risk and value have this on their radar. So I think, for example, when Andy's thinking about metrics that were part of that release candidate set, it's mm -hmm. also thinking about how they can actually be implemented <laughs> okay. in, in real life. So 
Um, all right, cool. That's very productive. Thank you. Um, any other working group updates? That was all from evolution, I think. <laughs> Under the auspices of evolution. Uh, all right, well, while, while we're in working group updates, again, I will encourage all of you to go take a look at the existing metrics, picking one or two, I don't care which two, um, to just take a look and, and provide any feedback during this uh, release candidate period. All right. Um, I want to chime in that yeah. also positive feedback would be welcome, that we at least have a track record that the metric was reviewed. I can, I can do positive feedback for all of them <laughs> right now, right out of the gate. <laughs> but that's a good point. Um, so let's see, there's nobody here from Augur. Um, Grimoire Lab, do you have any updates that you want to share? I don't have anything to share. Okay. Okay. That concludes my list. Does anybody have anything they would like to bring forward? Silence means no in this case. <laughs> well, so with that, um, thanks everybody for your time. And I know there's, is there an evolution working group tomorrow, Jesus? Yeah, I think so. I'm sending the announcement in a moment. Okay. Um, and then Don, this is not common week, is it? I don't think so. No, it was it was last week, and tomorrow it's on Thursday, which is the fourth. So I wasn't. We're not yeah. going to do one. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody be out. <laughs> yes, goodbye, all Americans. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, like we take a lot of vacation. <laughs> <laughs> You get right. so few days, we're not going to take them away from you. I know, it's going to freak the Europeans out. Wait, what? <laughs> God? <laughs> well, uh, thanks, everybody. It was really good to see everybody, and I'm sure we'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. See you.